Hey, you guys. Um, welcome. Welcome. Marie, do we call you Marie Claire? Marie Claire, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Marie Claire's with us today, and we're going to talk about dance and ecstatic dance and movement and movement and dance for healing, are we? Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> and awakening and, and dance meditation and uh, dance is foreplay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just dance because um, it's funny that, that how expanded you know dance the whole idea of dance can be mm -hmm. and, and the large umbrella yes mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and uh, <coughs> we met mm, four or five years ago mm -hmm. and, and yeah. almost uh, six I guess but yeah. wow and and um, I had for lots of so years I was going to Bali and, and up in Ubud we had dance. We had ecstatic dance and I discovered ecstatic dance. I remember my very first ecstatic dance at the yoga barn and it was a really small room we were in up in the, the original uh, space at yoga barn. Have you been there? Uh, I never went to yoga barn, no. I went to, I've been to Bali. But yeah. Uh, and, uh, and we were dancing. I just I fell in love with ecstatic dance and, and I would go whenever I was there. I'd be there on Friday night dancing or I'd be there on Sunday morning dancing. and. And it was just such a great way to to surrender, and 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 I and I actually had some experiences where I kind of disappeared mm -hmm. in dance, and and which is, you know, because I don't know about you, but sometimes for me, um, I can be self-conscious when I'm dancing. Mm -hmm. You know, like you know how do, how do I look? My I remember I was dancing with my girlfriend. She said, "You know, your arms are awfully long, and they kind of fly around." <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you. It's helpful, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and they do. I'm mm -hmm. it, it, and I'm okay with that now. Good. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so, um, but the reason I'm telling you that story about Bali is because I I came home and we had a space down on 17th Avenue and where uh, we were able to have ecstatic dance on Friday nights. Mm -hmm. It was Friday nights, yeah. And that's where we met. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And but you have a like a long history of dance. I do, yeah. So I I grew up uh sort of in the studio setting, so uh dancing, you know, ballet, jazz, modern, um, tap. I uh, did a little bit of hip hop, but that wasn't really my, my scene. Uh and then some Latin ballroom and all this kind of stuff, but very rigorous training and very um structured and um high expectations. There's lots of competitions and things Discipline. like that. Discipline. Discipline, yeah, a lot of discipline, a lot of like needing to look a certain way, a lot of perfectionism mm -hmm. um, that ultimately caused a lot of unhealthy patterns for me. Um, it brought me to some disordered eating when I was a teenager, um, some really negative self self uh, image stuff, self talk, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because we're constantly, constantly comparing to other people and constantly, um, you know, you're never flexible enough and you're never skinny enough and you never. Mm -hmm you know, all, all the not enoughs. Um, so that really got ingrained into me. And then I, I stopped when I was 17 because I kind of fell out of love with it. Uh, and then I went on my way and I went to school and I um, traveled and kind of throughout those years, I started to, you know, really enjoy dancing on dance floors at, at clubs and on, you know, beach yep. parties and things like that. Yeah, like, oh. because you can. Yeah, because I can and I, and I just love it. Like when there's mm -hmm. good music and there's good Me too. rhythm, mm -hmm. you know, that just gets you going. I was like, oh, this is just so powerful. Um, and so I had been in Southeast Asia for a couple of years uh, working for a travel company. And then I, I crash landed back in Calgary. I was living in the Beltline. I was living just a block from Bali and beyond. Um, and so when I found out about these ecstatic dance Friday nights, I think I walked into the store one day and someone gave me a flyer or something. I thought, oh, I'll check this out. And I just fell in love. I started going every week and, I remember. Um, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. there very often. <laughs> and I started having all of these like psychosomatic, um, mind, body, emotional sort of experiences that I was like, wow, there's something, something to this. So I started doing some research and, um, I found a dance movement therapy program in Vancouver. And so once I started looking into dance movement therapy, I just thought, oh my gosh, this is like everything inside my whole being was like, this is my path. Um, so I started taking some courses uh, wow. shortly after in Vancouver and I'm still en route to, to complete my dance therapy training. 
Um, but then yeah, I also started hosting my own ecstatic dances and um, teaching dance and movement that's really focused on the social and emotional concept and um, feeling good when you're dancing rather than trying to look a certain way or trying to uphold a certain standard. Um, and it's interesting what you're saying about your arms earlier because I often start classes like I'll teach I teach to kids and I teach to all kinds of demographics and I'll often start by saying um, the only thing that you need to be able to dance is a body mm -hmm. so did everybody bring their body today <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> the kindergarten kids are like no and they think it's so funny right but yeah. it's true and, and you know I work with people um, with disabilities I work with people you know who, whose mobility is literally like arms to here and I teach them dance classes so it's yeah, dances for everyone can dance is truly what I believe. So, really, um, I was reading the other day about dance and dementia. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it just gets the blood flowing and yep. and, and wakes up the brain. Mm -hmm. uh, dance yeah. is so healing. Yeah, in uh, in dance therapy, they say from <coughs> from the cradle to the grave, there's there's applications. Of yes, this work. Yeah, for yeah. everyone. And and kids are natural dancers. Of course, yeah. And and, and they don't care. Yeah. When they're really young. They do a lot of jumping. <laughs> I found mm -hmm. when I'm working with really young kids, oh, yeah. I try to get them to say, "Okay, dance," and they all just jump. <laughs> it's really cute. But uh, yeah, so yeah, across across the board, and I think that it's when we're dancing, when we go into those ecstatic dances, it's it's a chance to connect with our inner child and a chance to play, mm -hmm. which a lot of times in our structured society we're not allowed to do. And you know, I've had a lot of people come to my dances and say, "Wow, like I've never, you know, I I don't." often get to let go and just mm -hmm. be playful like that, mm -hmm. you know? And then that mm -hmm. that's actually almost scary for them mm -hmm. to go into that space, mm -hmm. which is fair, you know? Mm -hmm. We all have our histories. It's funny, um, histories. you know, I, I've been in recovery in the 12-step world for, mm -hmm. for many years, and, and uh, so sometimes we have dances. Mm -hmm. um, uh, like, uh, there's a treatment center up in the nor Northeast called Fresh Start, okay. and they have a big gymnasium, we have dances, and. And I, I think that, uh, well, it's, it's, it's a lot like high school. Mm, yeah. the, uh, it, and here we are getting together. And most of us who, who are new in recovery mm -hmm. are like mostly about 13 or 14 years old. And, and so <laughs> we go to a, a dance mm -hmm. and, uh, and the girls kind of line up on one side and the boys on the other. It's very like high school. Right. And, and, yeah. and, and uh, over the years, I've been sober a long, long time. I've been to a lot of of dance events in mm -hmm. in the, in the uh, sober world and it's it's often a little bit you know um, reserved and, and kind of yeah. scary you know yeah i imagine well especially i would imagine in the recovery world where maybe a lot of them actually enjoy dancing in you know in their previous lives but it was under the influence oh, right oh totally Being yeah intoxicated yeah. so a lot of people like i have friends like that even in the music festival world who are like I don't know how to dance sober. Yes. You know, and so it's, that is, right, that is a very, yeah. um, it can be a really powerful opening for people to no realize kidding. that they can yeah. move their body and they can move energy through their body yeah. and have these experiences without the influence. Yeah. I, I remember, mm -hmm. um, I've been sober, I sobered up in, in December 1980, so it was a long, long time ago, but mm -hmm. I remember my first dance. It was that Christmas, we had a Christmas dance, and, mm -hmm. and, and it was like my first time dancing sober. Mm -hmm. and, and like I still remember that how um, uncomfortable I felt, and that, but once I got on the floor, like I love to dance. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, not a great dancer, but I, <laughs> like <laughs> as far as like, like uh, ballroom dancing or, mm -hmm. or, or uh, Latin Technique, dancing, right? yeah, yeah. I, I don't have all that, mm -hmm. but I can get into the music. Mm -hmm. and, and so yeah. um, I would just think it would be great to do uh, um, some uh, ecstatic dance it was just for people in recovery mm -hmm. so that they didn't have to dance with anybody yeah they could just come and mm -hmm. and uh, and dance yeah and, yeah that would be great and, and a little bit of guidance always helps with yeah. that you know and mm -hmm. even just tell like you know the, the classic sort of starting of an ecstatic dance is is a body scan right mm -hmm. and saying okay let's move our feet okay let's move our ankles let's, you know if you've been to an ecstatic dance then you know that that's often the formula mm -hmm. Um, but it's so helpful, yeah. you know, it's so, so helpful when people don't, they're not inhabiting their bodies and they're not paying attention and they don't, you know, you say, okay, dance. And they're like, oh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know any moves. They're living right? in their head. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they think, well, I don't, I don't know any moves. And it's like, yeah. well, you've got all these parts, <laughs> you yes. know, you just, just Make move them. them right? Yes, yes. And so giving prompts and giving a little bit of yeah. engagement and saying, you know, what about your feet? 
what about your knees you know mm -hmm. what about your hips how about all these places in your body mm -hmm. that you can move in all these different directions and all these different ways um, and that can really help people sort of loosen up but I think an important piece to any kind of ecstatic dance is like a container of safety mm -hmm. and I've definitely been in places where I've facilitated um, not even necessarily ecstatic dance but just like a movement and dance program mm -hmm where there hasn't been a super good rapport between the participants and so that'll all that often will um make it a little bit more vulnerable mm -hmm. and so they don't always get into it you know as, mm -hmm. as much right away mm -hmm. so it takes a little bit more coercion um <laughs> you know we were just talking to, uh, earlier about uh, us doing a one day thing mm -hmm. uh, with our monday night group yeah and and uh, um i just had this thought that if we start at 10 in the morning, we do a few, we'll have some music through the day, but if mm -hmm. you come in in the evening, we should all be bonded so well. That's true. Yeah, by, after a full day of yeah, work together. Yeah, it, there would be, you know, we'll mm -hmm. throw caution to the wind. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, because dance is, like, it's vulnerable. Yes. It is vulnerable to be seen in movement. Yeah. Right? And it's, and it's to be seen in expression. It's to be seen in a way that we're not seen when we're just speaking. Yes. When we're expressing verbally. Um, or yeah. even emotionally in any way, yeah. it's different than expressing with your body. It's, it's much more vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there, there needs to be like a, a set container of safety and of relationship and rapport mm -hmm. to really be successful. So you've just started like a Wednesday night? Yeah, yeah. so it's twice a month um, at Evolved Movement Arts. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, twice a month, the second and the fourth Wednesday of every you month. Shout out for Evolved. Yeah, yes. shout out at Evolved. Yeah, yeah. Uh, second and fourth Wednesday of each month uh, from seven until nine p.m. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> we have um, company just yeah, dropped by. We have, we have a guest. <laughs> um, Hi, cat. Yeah, and so the second week of the month, so the first, uh, the first dance of the month, the second week, the second Wednesday, will always be unfacilitated. Yes. So just, I've got my set list, I do a little opening circle, we dance, we have a closing circle, uh, and then the fourth Wednesday will be facilitated. So mm -hmm. I'll be speaking on the mic throughout the dance, mm -hmm. um, offering some guidance and offering some, just some prompts that, uh, mm -hmm. that you can take or leave kind of thing. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that January through uh, June. Mm -hmm. is, it's booked. So. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever go with, um, there was a guy in town, like, his name has gone right in my mind, that used to do um, um, something for... Five Rhythms. <laughs> Evangelos? Yes, yeah. yes, it's gone right <laughs> of, I, I, yeah. I know him really well. Oh, good, it, yeah. It, yeah. He's have living you, in Greece now, I Yes, have, yeah. you, have you done yeah, that? Yeah, I've done some of the Five Rhythm stuff yes. with him. Uh, well, he came to our ecstatic dance uh, once and, oh, really? and facilitated. Volume, yeah. Yes, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, cool, that's great. And, and, uh, so that's pretty facilitated. Yeah, yeah, so they do quite, um, often there'll be like an exercise. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not super familiar with five rhythms, but mm -hmm. th from what I've experienced, um, there'll be some sort of free flow and then some guidance and then there'll be like an active exercise where mm -hmm. the music will sometimes stop or sometimes just slow right down and then it'll be a, an invitation to do this exercise mm -hmm. and of course you you're welcome to to participate or not if you, so you know, your okay. ecstatic dance hour and a half uh a approximately yeah nice. yeah i try to leave a buffer so that we're not there right until 9 p.m because i know sometimes weeknights can be mm -hmm. you know we're, we're kind of wrapping up the closing circle by 10 too mm -hmm. um so the dance itself is yeah just just under between between an hour and hour and a half depending on mm -hmm. how I'm feeling that day. <laughs> but yeah. Nice. Well, mm -hmm. I want to, uh, I mean, I think it's so healthy. Mm -hmm. And it, and, and when, for people to, to dance in a place, in a situation like that, uh, and, you know, and get into their bodies and, mm -hmm. and, and, and just, I think it lifts people up. I think totally. it's a, mm -hmm. an opportunity to, for awakening. Mm -hmm. it, it yeah, and, and what I often say, or as an introduction, if people have never done it before, is that the, the idea is that we are allowing our body to take the wheel. Because mm -hmm. more, you know, 99% of the time, our head's in charge, right? Our mind is in, is in charge. Um, and even, even in movement practices like, like yoga, you know, it's very linear. It's very now you do this and now you do this and now yes. you do, it's very prescriptive right mm -hmm. um and so with ecstatic dance the idea is just to uh, try our very best to say okay you're offline for now and mm -hmm. like what 
what is my sensory score doing? What is my, mm -hmm. what is my body saying? What are my inner impulses? Mm -hmm. What do I really need to do right now? Mm -hmm. Right? What mm -hmm. must my body do mm -hmm. to feel alive? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and expressive. I've had experiences in ecstatic dance where, where I, I mean, I totally disappeared. Mm -hmm. I'm not just, it, I, I wasn't even in some way conscious of the body. I was, you know, and the body sure. was just doing the dance. Mm -hmm. and, and um, which is amazing to get there, to, mm -hmm. you know, to have that, you know, and, and uh, um, in, in Bali, in Ubud, often there'd be um, 150 people in the room there now, mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a good sized room, but it's full, 150 is full, right. and, and uh, so after, you know, 20 minutes, everybody's kind of nodded at everybody, because, you know, you, you, I know a lot of people, and, and I want to get past that, that social thing mm -hmm. into, um, you know, not in a way not acknowledging anybody and dropping into the inner space. Mm -hmm, totally. And it's interesting to witness how people show up in a space like that because sometimes, I mean, as a facilitator, I, c I can see when people are uncomfortable moving into their inner space. Mm -hmm. They stay out of the whole dance, yes. which is fine, you yes. know, that's, yep. that's, if that's where they're at. And that's, honestly, that's something that I love so much about ecstatic dance is that you can have these incredible revelatory, you know, spiritual experiences, emotional experiences, mm -hmm. um, or you can just have a playful, fun time, mm -hmm. or you can get your little workout in, mm -hmm. or you can have this embodiment experience. You know, mm -hmm. there's sort of this range of experiences that can happen in the same room at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not telling you to have any particular experience. Yes. I'm just giving you options and giving you guidance. Mm -hmm. and my philosophy really is to constantly bring it back to the body yes um and i don't want to offer any uh i don't want to say oh come to this event and you'll have a spiritual awakening mm -hmm. you know because i can't i can't guarantee that it's it's completely up to you and how all the different elements kind of align to, mm -hmm. to make that happen for you mm -hmm. but um but i love that about the dance is that that that, that whole spectrum of things can happen mm -hmm. So can we back up a little bit? Yes, sorry. Um, no, it's okay. <laughs> no, it's beautiful because I'm gonna go there. I think it, like there was a time in your life, uh, you went to university, mm -hmm. and what did you study? <laughs> Economics. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And then you decided that wasn't gonna be it, and you went off to Asia, mm -hmm. and and kind of on a search. Uh, I a little bit. It was a it was a travel trip. You know, post school, I graduated. I just wanna get out of here but for two a little years. bit. Yeah, but then, but then when I was out there, like the initial trip was four months, and yes. then when I was out there, I got a job uh, for a travel company. So then I stayed. So then you became a facilitator of, uh, when people uh, would come in. Yeah, you like a tour guide. Tour kind guide of thing. Oh, that's party. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of parties. <laughs> lot of parties. I've, I've met some people that do yeah. that in Ubud. Yeah. And and uh, yeah. and you know, a lot. they have um, to go right from there to treatment. Mm hmm. I believe it. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, yeah. I didn't quite get that far, but. <clears throat> Close. I definitely got very ill by the end of it all. Did you? My body sort of started shutting down, and that was that was the early days of me actually listening to my body. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> thinking, oh, something's going on here. Mm -hmm. um, paying attention. So well, good for you. Yeah. And then, um, uh, so now this the, what you're doing with movement is mm -hmm. is full time. Yeah, pretty much. I'm. Uh, I mean, I have a couple side gigs. I. You know, I clean some houses and I bartend once mm -hmm. in a while, but for the most part, most of my um, livelihood is coming from dance and movement work. Nice. Um, yeah, both through my own business, so yep. move, Movement, which is spelled M-E-A-N-T. Mm -hmm. uh, website is meanttomove.org. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, and then I also contract with Dubasov Dance and Wellness, and so they're a, a dance, and, dance and wellness uh, community in Calgary studio. Uh, for children with disabilities and special needs. Oh, fun! So yeah, I do a lot of contract work with with that studio, mm -hmm. um, and that's been really beautiful and great um, mm -hmm. experience for this dance movement therapy work that I'm mm -hmm. that I'm training in. So mm -hmm. giving me lots of experience. Um, to your spiritual path. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> tell us, how, what are you doing? Are you are you, hmm. you reading? You are you meditating these days? Yeah, so I am. Um, well, I'll I'll go back. Okay. <laughs> I'll go back and move forward. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I I did the kind of growing up in the Catholic school, but not really going to church. Like just having this concept of you know God yeah. or whatever, but didn't pay much attention to it ever. Uh, and it wasn't until I was in Southeast Asia that I started um, 
connecting to Buddhism and seeing how the the Thai people were living and how they were really in touch with um, some sort of greater, you know, Mm -hmm. cosmic something. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But I didn't really make a whole ton of sense of it. I just was like, oh, this is neat. Then I came home and I was living with my cousin who I was mentioning before. I was in um, recovery for addiction. And uh, he started telling me a little bit about Alcoholics Anonymous and um, the term saying God as you understand it. So then he gave me all that. He was like, you know, some people call God Mother Nature. Some people call it the universe. Some people call it this. Some people call it that. And I was like, that resonates. It just 100% resonated with me. And then from that moment on, um, I started praying. Um, I started, you know, touching or like getting in touch with my body. Um, And now I've moved into, I've done a couple of Vipassana uh, meditation retreats. Stop it. Yeah, it's 10 days. 10 days? Yeah. Oh, I bow to you. (laughs) It's uh, it's pretty intense. Yeah, but since then I've actually been working with a meditation city or a meditation teacher in the city named Anne Mahoney. I don't know if you've met her before. I'd love to though. Lovely. She holds meditations on the first and third Wednesday of every month at her place in Inglewood or her um, offices in Inglewood. So she's a therapist as well. And she offers retreats, and so I've gone to a couple of her five-day retreats, which is all in the Theravada Buddhist tradition. Okay. Um, so I do meditate uh, in that style, um, following loving kindness, compassion, uh, loving friendliness, uh, appreciative joy, and equanimity. Mm-hmm. Kind of the foundations of uh, Theravada Buddhism. Um, but I'm the type of person that, like, I've never been able to put spirituality in a box. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think even those the ten day vipassanas was a little too rigid for me. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of like this is the way is the only way. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Anyone who says you know this is the only way to, you know, be in touch with Creator, be in touch with with God, um, I kind of I shy away from mm-hmm. because I think that there's so many different ways, and that each person's path mm-hmm. will be different. Mm-hmm. Um, and so yeah. I totally agree with uh, with the things that we're doing on Monday nights. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I, I, I have felt that one of the difficulties for people to get into meditation is there's kind of gatekeepers mm-hmm. and, and the gatekeeper has a philosophy right. and, and uh, so what, what I'm trying to do is or I'm doing is, is that there's it, it's not about a philosophy mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. to learn to meditate and, and uh, um, if, if we can help people to find their own way totally. yeah. and and you know, through consciousness mm-hmm. and and, uh, and, uh, and personal awareness, and then, you know, just the idea that there is something mm-hmm. in and I love Eckhart Tolle's description of, of uh, the power of now. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever there is, whatever your concept of of a higher power, or universal mm-hmm. intelligence, or uh, the the uh, the Zen or, or yeah. yeah, whatever name yeah, you the want Tao, to yeah, and, and Tao whatever <laughs> whatever it is, it can only be found in the now. Mm-hmm. In, in, yeah. in, and and our uh, my uh, what I see is that we're prevented from being here now by our uh, belief systems, mm-hmm. by our conditioned ideas of of who we are. Mm-hmm. You know, not slim enough. Yeah. Not uh, pretty enough. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. All, yeah, those things. all those things. Not smart yeah. enough. And well, and the thing about meditation is, a lot of people think that it requires, you know, all this fancy stuff, like the the fancy cushion and the you know the right altar. And my all stool. The right, yeah, all these things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. you do need the stool. <laughs> I need a stool actually. Um, but ultimately it's just about being present in whatever it is that you're doing you know like my brother often says like doing the dishes is a meditation as mm-hmm. long as you're actually present with it mm-hmm. the whole time right and um th- i think that's where the, the movement stuff comes mm-hmm. in too where it's like can you be present with your body somebody just sent me an o- osho uh um video where he talks about 112 different methods of meditation mm. and and, uh, and, uh, and osho is always you know, quite funny, mm-hmm. but uh, a little controversial now too. I don't know if you've seen some of the Netflix stuff. Well, yeah, but he was always he controversial. Was he? Okay, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. No. You, you, you should have been there. Yeah, I was. It was wasn't before your time. It was. Yeah. Yeah, and and I missed it too. I mm-hmm. I, w- I could have. I was old enough, but um, I was still early in recovery, and I didn't right. know, you know, yeah. uh, anything about anything. Sure. And and uh, <laughs> but uh, at the time, yes, he was controversial, but he wanted to be controversial. Right. He wanted to say, you know, this is not working. 
Right. You sure. know, mm-hmm. and, and so he uh, and he sure stirred up a lot of stuff. Yeah, it sounds like and, it. And uh, and, yeah. and anyway, he's sorry, you're saying 112. Yeah. Uh, yeah, types or ways. Yeah. Ways of meditation and, mm-hmm. and dance, of course, and and and. Uh, uh, movement is mm-hmm. w- was a big part of mm-hmm. of some of those hundred and twelve. Yeah, you know? expression and like moving, moving energy. Like we, you know, we're all just made up of these little vibrating molecules, right? Yes. That are filled with stuff that we can't see, <laughs> right? All this so we're flowing empty. energy. Yeah, we're empty. Yeah, there's more space than there is dent matter, right? Yes, that's yeah, kind of that's what they the say. Idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, yeah, to just sit. I mean, I, I do, I, I love, I do believe in the power of stillness. I think that it's also important to have some balance with yes. movement. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll always end my dances with stillness. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, and that same thing where, I, you know, I'm eagle eye when I'm facilitating, but you see the people who aren't quite able to be there. You know, they're mm-hmm. fidgeting the whole time of the stillness. And it, that's yeah. fine, you know, it's where we're at. But um, did we get still the other night? We beat the floor. Oh New yeah, Year's but Eve. there was a bit of stillness right before that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It was short, but mm-hmm. yeah, because everyone just wanted to keep, you know, partying. going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, that yeah, was that, a that, big was group. A, that was a great event. I was very. If anyone you know watching right now was there, like I'm just so grateful for the turnout and, and the energy and the enthusiasm. It was just such a beautiful event. Mm-hmm. It's the second year I've done a New Year's Eve thing, and now I think it's gonna have to be annual. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, and I'll need some collaborators next year. I think because yeah. it was. Uh, a lot to put on so yeah I'll bet well yeah. easy to find people to help mm-hmm. you know um, people always lots of times it's we want to be part of what's going on to mm-hmm. or help and that gives us a uh, kind of a reason for being there in mm-hmm. a way you know mm-hmm. to to be of service yeah and so I think it would it would be no f- trouble to find some volunteers it's true. I, well I did have some volunteers this year who were invaluable to me like I couldn't have yeah I could not have done that without them um, but yeah, I think next year, same thing. And yeah. So movement for awakening, mm-hmm. movement for healing. Yep. Uh, movement to get to know yourself, yep. you know, for, for connection to self. For and self-awareness. Self-awareness. Yeah. I, I always, uh, or on my website in various places, I talk about using body awareness as a bridge to self-awareness. Mm-hmm. So understanding like, what is this, you know, little suit that we've got here mm-hmm. and what's it saying to me? Yep. It has so much wisdom, you know, and. Um, there's so many different schools of thought that talk about disease as just being signposts for um, healing, right? As yes. being like, hey, pay attention, right? Yeah. And I have a lived experience of that with several different injuries and um, illnesses and things like that. But I and you've danced through them. Exactly. Well, when I, I don't know if you remember, but when we first met and I was going to your dances, I actually fractured my spine uh, in the, it was, dis- or it was November. 2014 yeah 2014 um and so I couldn't come anymore but then once I started coming back there just came a day where I was like I need to go move my body you know I'd been mm-hmm. laying on the couch healing for so long I remember that yeah, yeah. And so I came back and had to just move very slow and very consciously it's so yeah. cool that your journey um had you know our paths crossed and yeah and, and yeah, that influenced awesome. your journey yeah oh totally yeah, yeah I mean I've we were talking about this before but how a lot of what the way you were holding space for those ecstatic dances is a lot of what pushed me into into starting my own Mm -hmm. Um, because uh, once your space closed down and everything kind of ended there I started seeking out other ecstatic dances and I I never quite found exactly what I was looking for and I just thought you know what I'm gonna just do this myself (laughs) (laughs) and so I started and that was around the same time as this dance movement therapy education came into play and um, yeah, and it all kind of just blended together into this really beautiful thing. Yeah. Well, I'm going to talk to you about coming in and doing uh, our evening on the mm-hmm. on the tenth. What would be great is if you came for the whole day mm-hmm. and actually participated. I would love that. Yeah, participated as well as then mm-hmm. um, facilitated. Well, we could even I, don't, I mean just an idea, but open with a dance mm-hmm. and then also close with a dance. We sure could, right? Yes, I think. Dancing and is a good way. we could dance some in the middle, too. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> just let's just dance all day. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think opening with getting the body moving mm-hmm. um, and getting out of that um, 
you know, the left brain, the yeah. rest the dead. Yeah. Cause we're all so pulled into the left brain all the time, which is the linear thinking, yeah. the structure. Even if it's like a half hour of dance and then, yeah. and then some meditation mm -hmm. and then, yeah. yeah. It really helps people just like settle into a space. Yes. Yeah, to be yeah. able to, Shake it to off. be embodied. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I have all these fun tricks, all these different movement games that um, really, it, they, it's basically brain gym stuff mm -hmm. that, that um, based on brain gym that gets your hemispheres talking to each other. So mm -hmm. it's it's like, actually, if you want to try right now, this one's fun. So you uh, point one finger and one thumb, but you got to have that thumb down. Okay. Yeah. And then you switch. <laughs> yeah. Just so point, okay, this thumb up and that th finger down. Okay. And then, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's hard. <laughs> and you just go back and forth. Okay. Keep and then, and then, uh, and then, okay. Do you I teach this a lot, so I'm practiced, you but it's hard. Do you okay. Gosh. Right? Yeah. So it's just about having those two sides of the body, the two sides of yes. the brain, yeah. trying to communicate. I, yeah. Mm. I and it, yeah, it uh, just... It one of my sons went to uh, Waldorf, mm. the Waldorf mm. School, and, yeah. and part of Steiner's thing, with, he taught, th they were knitting, and mm. knitting was about getting the two sides of the brain mm. going, and, and, and sure. they used knitting for yeah. Uh, th that, yeah. which was really cool. That's Steiner cool. was amazing. Right. Because, yeah. I mean, they are like you know both sides of the brain are always active they're mm -hmm. always there together but we live in such a left brain dominant society mm -hmm. and so the right brain's often just kind of like in the background <laughs> you'll practice uh, yeah, you'll like, I, it'll come i'm sure but yeah the stuff like that because it's funny it's yep, playful. At three in the morning yeah like wait a second <laughs> yeah this. but yep. because it's playful it's funny yep. you know that it disarms people immediately little yes. games like that mm -hmm. you know um so there's a lot of different things we can do that oh, kind fun. of it just it gets people to like leave the pedestrian, leave, mm -hmm. you know, the everyday linear life mm -hmm. and just arrive into like this new space that's going to be meant for healing, mm -hmm. healing whatever. Yes. So yeah. That, that's why I suggest opening with dance. Well, uh, something body oriented. You fun. Know? Yeah. We're going to, for sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think, that sounds like a lot of fun. yeah, I'm, I, I'm the converted. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me? 14. So, um, w uh, just so that you know what we're talking about, um, we're going to have a, like a, a, one day probably 10 in the morning till 10 at night um i don't want to call it a workshop but it's kind of it'll, we'll be workshopping a bunch of stuff mm -hmm. we'll be dancing we'll be meditating we'll be um dropping our mask hopefully we'll have some laughter some mm -hmm. tears and uh self-discovery uh, a whole day mm -hmm. and we'll eat mm -hmm. and and i asked the group the other night um what they thought about us doing a vegetarian day mm -hmm. and and cool. uh, um because there was a few meat eaters like yeah. m me, and, sure. and, uh, uh, and they all voted for a vegetarian day. Oh, so good. And like a potluck style? Yeah, or? Cool. yeah we'll, we'll have Italy potluck, and, but kind of uh, uh, two meals mm -hmm. or a snack and a meal. Sure. And, and uh, uh, that's on the 14th of March. So we ha we're going to put an event together, and we'll put that event, maybe mm -hmm. on, we'll tag this with sure, that event. Sure, yeah, and, and can uh, share it and stuff. Yes, yeah. and, and so do you do actually an event every Wednesday? Like to uh, every other Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you, you have an event like on Facebook. Yeah. I that do. We could share and we'll yeah. share on, uh, Bowing Beyond. You know what's happening in YYC mm -hmm. and, and and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Are you going to do any other things that you want people to know about between now and, um, like this year? Do you have anything else planned or? Well, there's a couple different. It's yeah. I'm kind of still in that start. I'm like in the the slow start of the year here, mm -hmm. getting all my things in order. We don't have to have it organized, but just maybe yeah. some thoughts of what but, might be uh, coming. There's, there's a practice that I've become familiar with um, that's a meditative movement practice called authentic movement. Mm -hmm. And it comes from, and you know, it's it's a very generic name. You know, you ask people, have you done authentic movement? People are like, yeah, I think so. Like, well, no, there's, there's a discipline called authentic movement. Um, and it was born out of Jungian depth psychology mm -hmm. uh, back in the 1940s. Yeah. Uh, and this longing to put the subconscious into movement. Yeah. So it's this really beautiful practice. It's done without music. Um, so a little different than ecstatic dance, uh, a little bit more. It requires a little bit more sort of self-discipline and, and desire. So to Jung, Jung did this? Or uh, no, it was a dance therapist by the name of Mary Starks Whitehouse. Okay. Who was studying Jungian psychology. Okay. And okay. she wanted a way to put it into the body, mm -hmm. to put this embodiment work into it. Nice. I actually don't know if Jung 
was ever involved in her path in particular. Okay. What was her name again? Mary Starks Whitehouse. Oh, good. Yeah, she was we'll one, tag of the, her. one of the founders of dance <laughs> movement therapy. Yeah. I don't think she's alive anymore. No, but <laughs> <laughs> there'll be something. Yeah, she's a pioneer in the field. But uh, wow. Anyway, so I'm I'm going to be putting on some introductory workshops in authentic movement. Nice. Um, sometime in February, March, kind of thing. Uh, and, and some some more uh, extended weekend workshops as well out in Bread Creek and things like that. So if people want to learn a little bit more about um, bringing subconscious and unconscious material to movement and uh, really honing in on what it means to follow our inner impulses, mm -hmm. uh, it's a really beautiful practice. It, it's the most... It's the practice that has brought me the most in depth, the quickest yes. in anything mm -hmm. I've ever experienced. Um, it's so beautiful. And so, if anyone's interested, I would say the best way to to keep in touch about that is to just join my mailing list. Yes. Um, which is at the www.meanttomove.org. Okay, we'll mm. put that on here too. Yeah. Yeah. If you click on the contact yep. section, there's a join our mailing list. And I don't send out spam or anything like that. It's just seasonal, pretty You're much. Updates. Sure, you don't get send out yeah. spam. Yeah. I just do do uh, seasonal updates, so it's not too often. Yeah. But just with what's going on, so that's nice. that's a good way to to keep in touch. And then, I was looking at maybe doing some kids workshops again. Um, I've done that in the past. Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, just it's about reaching out and finding the right demographic because mm -hmm. um, I find it can be a little there's a little bit more challenges in getting a l kids in one place at one time mm -hmm. because it's like parents schedules and kids schedules. What do you so think fun. about doing um, some video? Mm, what do you mean? Well, I mean what you're doing is really marketable mm -hmm. it, uh, especially have we had uh, you know like a, a global market. Sure, yeah. You know, like to facilitate through a video, you so mean? Do, yeah, and, mm -hmm. and, and so that people could um, learn movement. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, that sounds silly, but not really, you know, because yeah. it would come with a with whole conversation of uh, how to get out of here and into here. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, different techniques, and yeah. Yeah. And, and I have considered it. Um, I just, I'm not much of a technological person, and oh. the whole thought of like, putting it all together and getting it all uploaded it just it feels like a little too I might have somebody for you yeah perfect <laughs> yeah, we'll talk <laughs> yeah, yeah to have to have some assistance with that portion of it would be really nice um, yeah. because I think it's a great idea I actually did a series last January I did a five-week series um, called being body aware mm -hmm. and I, I it was all about gaining body awareness skills and so I uh, framed together these five weeks. We used a little bit of dance, a little bit of authentic movement, a little bit of mindfulness meditation, mm -hmm. um, a lot of dance movement therapy, mm -hmm. theory and practices. Uh, and I was considering putting that content into a video series because I think that there's a lot of people out there who, you know, they're like, oh, I'm not very body aware. Or when it comes down to, you know, oh, I'm clumsy or oh, I'm, you know, I don't really, like I've, I've had friends in the past who, you know, they'll be grumpy and they won't be, oh, I'm not sure what's going on. I feel something's wrong. <coughs> and then they go to the bathroom and they come back and they're like, oh, I feel better. And I'm like, you just had to pee and you didn't realize that the whole time. You know, yeah. like that much of a disconnect yeah. with the body. Or they had to go have yeah. a bowel movement. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. yeah you're just and full of shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like just, and yeah. that's, you know, th th those are some of the most basic things your body's trying to tell you. Yeah. It's like water in, water out. Like yeah. I'm hungry. I'm th these really basic mm -hmm. physical things that our body's trying to communicate to us mm -hmm. um, that a lot of people are disconnected from. And so, so the content in being body aware was really around, um, there was, I was giving like homework that was like these little reflections to notice through the week. Um, and I had each weeks sort of follow uh, a different element in the way that the elements interact with our body. Mm -hmm. So air, breath, water, the way water moves in and out of our body. Wow. Or food. So, yep. so that content feels really powerful and I would like to put that into a video. Yeah, you could bring a little content. bit of that to our yeah. one day. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's a lot of resources. By the time we get there, <laughs> they won't need me. You'll yeah. be... <laughs> <laughs> You'll have you know. all these experts. <laughs> Yeah. in all these different ways. Yeah. yeah. That would be great. We're going to do some uh, dyads to, mm. you know, mm -hmm. little uh, Zen uh, Cohen's, you know, <laughs> tell me who you are, oh. the questions. Oh, you the know, questions, sure. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I've experimented a little bit with dyads. Those are also very vulnerable. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Be very, um, very opening. Long got gazes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for what you're doing. Sure, of course. It, you're obviously, you know, you you care you mm -hmm. you know this, you're not going to get rich doing this no <laughs> and, and I, well you are mm -hmm. 
in different ways. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's so cool. Mm -hmm. and, and well, and it's it's being very well received by the community, and yes, you know, we were just talking about those Esker events that I mm -hmm. put on last year, that were really great, and um, yeah, just the work. Like I said before, when I first found dance movement therapy, I my whole being got excited about yeah. like this is my yeah. path and once i started committing wholeheartedly to it all these things started hap happening yeah right the universe conspired to mm -hmm. to make this work for me so it's it's um i'm not i'm not stopping anytime soon mm -hmm. you know and, and eventually i do i've actually applied for um a master's program a master's of counseling mm -hmm. um, so that I can combo that with my dance movement therapy training and then become a, reg a registered dance therapist yes um, so then I can work in private practice and yes. really get down to like the nitty-gritty of working one-on-one -on -one with people and all different types of you may have to forget all the counseling stuff though yeah, it's true. <laughs> get out of the head a little yeah. bit. Just get those letters, right? So yes. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. But well, good for you. Yeah, I know. I'm really looking forward to what's ahead. And yeah, um, yeah. I want to. Uh, I'm interested in seeing how we can incorporate dance and movement with recovery. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I people. There's a lot of new stuff happening in that world. Yeah, that's and, great. And and. Uh, yeah. um, and so I think that that's going to be part of it. Mm -hmm. I really do. And I also think that breath work has uh, mm -hmm. a place in, in the recovery uh, community now. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, dance, breath work. Mm -hmm. Of course, meditation's always been there. But yep. uh, and and, uh, and my friend Trevor uh, Tipido does a, a thing called uh, Enlightenment Intensive. Mm. Have you heard of it? I don't think so. Is he the breath work teacher? No, that's oh. Trevor uh, Elric. Elric. Yellick. Okay. <laughs> I've always had a tough time with his last okay. name. Yeah. Yellick. And, and, uh, I don't know. I've never but Thibodeau does, well, it's that question. It's the tell me who you are, mm. but three days of it, 16 hours a day. Oh, okay. Wow. And, and while stuff falls away. Yeah, it right. It just falls away, and, and eventually you're just in the stillness. Right. You know, and uh, I mean, dance is quicker, but um, <laughs> right. but this is it has a different effect. You mm -hmm. know, it, it's amazing, and it's and it can be difficult. Mm -hmm. I believe it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it, it's it's right up there with the ten day vipassana. Sure. Yeah, in in, in level of of uh, commitment needed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You did two vipassanas. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Good for very, you. Yeah. Very intense. Well, honestly, <laughs> we're in in at Merit, the Youngstown. In Youngstown. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, awesome. I wanted to go again, but it, it just it never seems to line up. And now that I've found this other teacher that I just resonate with a little bit more, mm -hmm. her retreats, she does, she offers 10 days once in a while. Mm -hmm. um, but I haven't been able to commit um, to one of those. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I'd love to meet her. Yeah, she's great. Yeah, I'd love to interview her. Yeah. Yeah. Pat Mahoney. Yeah, she's yeah. lovely. Will you hook us up? Sure. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I'll bet I, we've met. But Maybe, it, yeah. the name sounds really familiar. Yeah, she's an equine therapist. Uh -huh. So she has like horses on a ranch. Oh, no does, way! Yeah, does like horse animal therapy. <laughs> yeah. And then she's also a mindfulness teacher in Theravada Buddhism. So. Nice. Yeah, she's lovely. Nice. So I certainly want to meet her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thanks for what you're doing and thanks mm -hmm. for coming in today course, and, yeah. and, and doing this. And, and you guys, Wednesday nights, what time? The Well, the second and fourth Wednesday of every yep. month. Seven till nine p.m. Seven till nine. Yeah. At. Uh, and my all my uh, my Instagram is movement dot y y c. Okay. M o v e m e a n t. Okay. Dot y y c, as in you're meant to move. Instagram. <laughs> so we're gonna post all that. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Love you guys. Thanks so much. Uh, follow us on YouTube. Uh, we'd love it if you hook. You know, if you subscribe to YouTube. Are you on YouTube? A little bit. Are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, technology. I'm a Do you have a channel? Uh. I think I might. Yeah, because I have one film actually. I, I created a short film a couple years a ago. A lot of dance. It's called When I Dance. We need dance on, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. I created a little, it's more of a, we call it a visual poem okay. more than a dance film, but it's a, yeah, a short, okay. short visual poem that nice. I have on my YouTube. So. All right. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, you guys. More to come. Yeah. Thank you. Love you. Thanks Bye. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Can I give you a hug? Yeah, sure. That was great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.